Can an electric unicycle actually be used for filmmaking? Let's find out. How did we get here? And what led to this wild idea of using a electric unicycle for filmmaking? Well, about five years ago, we purchased a Segway, which for those of you who don't know, is a two-wheeled self-balancing kind of personal transportation vehicle. At the time, we weren't sure if it was actually gonna be useful for capturing shots or if it was just one of those things that would sit in the corner and never get used. I can say that five years later, we have used it for so many shots. Frankly, I've used it probably way more than I ever would have expected to just because of how versatile of a piece of equipment it is. Now, that leads us to today. The world of electric unicycles is something that I've kind of kept an eye on for a couple of years now. It got me thinking and the more that I watched them and saw them, it seemed like the idea of using them as filmmaking tools wasn't that crazy just because of how capable these devices are. So that led me to reach out to a company called InMotion. This is the V14 Adventure, as it's called. I kind of told them my idea of how this could be used as a filmmaking tool, and they were totally on board. Now, we're not getting paid to make this video, but they did send this out to us, and we got the opportunity to have a bunch of us learn how to ride an electric unicycle for the first time. And let me tell you, there is a learning curve, but it is so much fun. So let me give you some details about this unicycle in particular. This is a 16 inch off-road tire. It has a 400 watt motor in it. It is capable of hitting a peak power draw of 9,000 watts, which is pretty crazy. It also has a 2,400 watt hour battery in it, which is pretty impressively big. And with that, it also has a smart BMS battery management system built in so that you can see each individual cell and what the voltage is and what the temperature is, which from a safety standpoint is actually a really nice feature to have. You can get uh, top speeds of 43 miles an hour, which is kind of mind blowing. The thought of going 43 miles an hour on this is a little scary. It also has a range of 75 miles, which let me tell you after riding this and going on, you know, a half an hour ride, I'm always just amazed when I finish to see how little uh, battery that I've used riding this thing around. In terms of its kind of durability, it has an IPX6 weather rating on the unicycle itself, and then the battery packs, which there are four, uh, it has an IPX7 rating on it, which is really impressive. With this being an off-road specific unicycle, because again, there are uh, electric unicycles that are a little more tailored to street riding and some that are off-road oriented, this being an off-road oriented one, uh, again, it has that off-road tire, but it also has a very high torque motor in it. So it's able to handle up to 50 degree slopes, uh, which is insane. It seems like every hill or slope that I do test it on, it has never given out on me. It gives that kind of reassurance when you're riding it that the motor is more than capable of what you're pushing it to, which is really great. And the biggest factor that really sold me on using these for filmmaking is the shock. Now, this one has a progressive shock on it and it's pretty impressive the amount of travel that you have on it and the heights that you can jump off of this thing going off things like the curbs and small bumps it handles amazing moving on there are a ton of other features with this unicycle i'm not going to get into because i don't want this to get super long but if you're interested check out the website and just see kind of how impressive of a vehicle this is because it's it's pretty cool now i want to move on to the really the elephant in the room and that is the learning curve because when people hear and when they see electric unicycles i think there's this uh, preconceived notion of it just being inherently risky and crazy and difficult to learn and there is the learning curve aspect but i have to say i am blown away with just how um, stable and in a way safe it feels to ride this thing there's always risk involved with riding any kind of electric vehicle uh, whether it is a one wheel a segway a, you know electric unicycle electric scooters uh, but it's pretty impressive just how safe and stable and solid this machine is. And um, it's really changed my perspective on riding electric unicycles. So let's talk a little bit about what it was like to learn it. Cause you're looking at someone who, until this thing arrived on our doorstep, I had never stepped foot on an electric unicycle. And frankly, I was just going at it with a, an idea of what it might be like uh, having ridden a Segway. It was about a three day learning process. The first day I stepped on this thing and I thought, what did I get myself into? I'm never gonna learn to ride this thing. This is 
terrifying. So I spent about 30 to 40 minutes the first day, took it out of the box, just trying to stay on it for more than two seconds. And by the end, it was kind of making sense, but I there was, there was no way I was able to ride it. Now day two, was able to start getting on it and at least going back and forth in straight lines kind of between walls. Uh, and it was kind of making sense. I was, you know, staying on for more than two seconds. So that was when. By day three, it was kind of weird. I don't know how to describe it, but it was like there was this magical moment where it just clicked in my brain and it made sense. And all of a sudden I could turn left, I could turn right. You know, I wasn't great by any means, but it just made sense. It was like I had just learned how to do it in an instant. And at that point I was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is doable. This isn't that crazy. And, and to give some context, this is a, uh, a higher level electric unicycle. There is a pretty wide range from beginner to advanced unicycles, electric unicycles. And this one is kind of on the top tier because it's an 85 pound uh, EUC. So it is a little bit bigger. It's an off-road one. So the pedals are, you know, that pedal height is a little higher. So there's aspects to learning on a bigger, heavier wheel that may be a little more difficult, but all that to be said, uh, I was able to do it after three days and within a week I was able to ride around and feeling confident. It was one of those things you just had to kind of power through those, you know, first early sessions to really make it click with your brain. And it was really interesting because our entire team actually had been playing around with it too. And it happened kind of the same way for everyone. It was one of those things of you're struggling, you're struggling, and then it just makes sense with your brain and you're able to ride it. So feels right. You do gotta kind of get a feel for it. And the uh, fastest I've gotten is 20 miles an hour because I think the limiter's set. Practice makes progress, as Zach would say. In total, we've put on about 100 kilometers. So all in all, we're still kind of, you know, not the most experienced riders, but you can tell that every day that you, you're riding it, you're gaining a little more confidence. It's making more sense and becoming more natural. And especially early on, you realize, you know, you're, you're activating muscles that are rarely used and your body is, you know, kind of needs some recovery time to, uh, recover from those early sessions as well. Yes, it is intimidating right away. It does click relatively quick. <laughs> now, before we talk too much about filming with it, I really do want to stress uh, the kind of the obvious thing, and that is the safety aspect of filming anything at high speeds, whether it is car mounts, you're filming on a Segway, a one wheel, or even doing drone shots. I mean, all of these scenarios all have inherent risk involved with them. And I think the most important thing to mitigate any sort of risk to anyone is just being smart. In our part 107 training that Adam and I do, uh, there's, there's four kind of hazardous attitudes that it talks about. Anything that involves high speed filmmaking where you're capturing fast moving subjects, where um, the camera operator's moving quickly, I think it's important to reference these. And those four hazardous attitudes are are anti-authority, impulsivity, invulnerability, and macho. So they're pretty obvious, but I think they're really important to keep in mind. Uh, when you're filmmaking like this, I think it's being realistic about, you know, not going overly fast, not thinking that you're invincible, um, and just being smart about how you're filmmaking and doing things safe. And we just really wanna, A, encourage people that again, we're not doing this um, willy-nilly. We really are focused on, hey, we wanna be smart about this. We're not trying to be careless or reckless about this stuff. And so a lot of these scenarios we were trying to do in areas where, you know, a, we're not going too fast or it's in controlled areas. Do not, uh, I'll, I'll put this as a disclaimer, do not do this um, without safety gear. I will not be held liable or something. If you're choosing to do some type of filmmaking like this, always remember, you know, whether it's wearing safety gear or just being very aware of your surroundings and having good communication, uh, those are all really important things to factor in when you are doing, like I said, high speed filmmaking in whatever capacity that is ability to handle all of these different scenarios, different terrains, is just amazing for a single wheel. You wouldn't think that something like this would be able to handle it, but uh, it can really well and uh, builds a lot of confidence in driving it around on different trains. So here we go. We'll see if we can make it up this steep incline with very loose gravel. That's crazy. I mean, it didn't even struggle. Didn't even slip. Wheel didn't slip. Here you go. Some more loose stuff. The only time I've actually had to maybe dismount or hop off was 
when I was going probably four miles an hour or slower. And those situations were where I just wasn't paying attention or just got sloppy basically. But again, those situations, you can just let it tip over or you can grab it pretty easy. But when I'm moving, I've hit some sketchy terrain, some weird bumps, some big cracks in, uh, you know, going off curbs or it might be in sidewalks and it just flies over them. It's amazing. So let's get on to what this is really about. Is this, is this actually feasible? Can you film with it? Can you use it as a filmmaking tool? Well, to give you some context, I did do uh, the first three weeks of riding this thing. I really didn't uh, do any camera operating on it because I was really focused on, I want to get used to riding this and what it feels like and, and just getting some miles on practicing riding. After about three weeks, I did finally pick up a camera, which is the one behind me actually on the gimbal setup. It's a black magic full frame with a Sigma 16 to 28. Um, and it has the DJI transmission system on it. So after about three weeks, I picked it up and I just started getting the feel for what it felt like to be holding and operating gimbal while riding it. Um, it really is one of those things that, you know, right when you mount it, it definitely feels different than riding with nothing, but you very, very quickly adapt to it and your body gets used to holding something like a 10 pound camera setup, 12 pound camera setup in your hands. It felt very natural. So this first setup, I went out and I just did some general landscape shots and this was me just doing it solo so i did not have a first ac i didn't even have a subject i was just trying to capture some really fast moving dolly type landscape shots and to see how it felt operating camera solo uh, while using the unicycle beautiful golden hour you know we'll see what we can see the uh, getting on process is it's a little clunky it's not bad but once you're going it's, it's great it really doesn't feel awkward it just never gets old. Uh, the curbs, so you just pop off and it, uh, it's just so smooth. It's just lovely. Try this here. Looks like you could be a fun little angle. Right here we got a steep hill, so why not try it, you know? I really think where the potential for something like this could come in handy is when you have a first AC who can help with uh, record trigger, uh, making slight adjustments to exposure, and uh, small things like that that just take a little bit off of the camera operator side uh, allow me to focus on the driving aspect. That being said, I still felt like it was very doable. But overall, it feels really good going on different terrains and stuff. Huge difference with this is compared to a Segway, say, um, is the speed and the suspension. The Segway would just shake you to your bones because um, you just felt every little bump on those wheels with no suspension on it. So it gives you confidence going over curbs, over big bumps, hitting you know, unexpected stuff, whether it's a, a rock or a stick, you just kind of breeze over it. You don't have to worry about it totally totally throwing you off. Now, obviously this is static stuff. I think where this could shine would be tracking with a mountain bike, uh, you know, really tracking with a lot of things. It could be someone that's running, it could be a vehicle. Some of you are probably thinking you could do this with a drone. You're not wrong. Uh, but I think where this shines is situations where you have areas you need to maneuver. It could be between trees. Drones are great, but you have flight restrictions. A lot of times we did a, a bunch of park shoots. We were completely grounded because it was near a military base. And there's areas where you will never have clearance to fly. So it replaces that, you know, obviously there's things like you could shoot out of an ATV, a four wheeler, true enough. But situations like this, uh, I'm on the Capitol grounds. That's not an area where you'd be able to be driving a UTV, an ATV, um, really any motored vehicle where something like this you kind of have a little bit of a pass on. Uh, when seven kilometers, I started this ride with 75%. I'm done 65%. That's crazy. Hardly anything. All right, time to go home. I was solo last time. I got a crew this time. I think it's gonna be cool. We're gonna get some downtown shots. We would be doing more off-road stuff, but uh, a lot of rain, so that's a problem. Can't do much off-roading stuff with the roads and the off-road areas being super muddy. So we're gonna do some stuff downtown. So should be pretty fun, but uh, yeah, let's take it out. It's golden hour right now, so we gotta get going. We're gonna set up some camera stuff here. So here is the DJI transmitter that we're gonna be using. Here's the receiver. So we got the focus, we got camera control. 
Just simplifies the entire system, makes it a really smooth operating experience. So I'm gonna get on my safety gear. I like that. I can't wait to see all the comments. We actually went out and I had Zach and Adam come along. Adam was capturing some shots of me on the unicycle filming. And then we actually had a subject, which was my wife on a Honda Ruckus. And we just did some tracking shots with her. Zach helped with being my first AC. I think that's where really the potential of something like this can shine is when you have someone who's helping assist with that camera operating. I think the shots turned out really great. I think it's uh, really cool what was captured. and. A lot of these areas and the speeds that we were going at would have been really difficult to do with a Segway. When you're riding a unicycle and when you're riding a Segway for that matter or anything, there's always this balancing act of you need to be paying attention to where you're driving and paying attention on the terrain in front of you, uh, but you're also trying to frame up a shot, which isn't always the easiest thing to do. So having something like a first AC who can be helping with things like the pan and the tilt, recording trigger, the camera operator, to be able to focus on where you're driving and how quickly you need to be moving and all those aspects. Like with all things, with filmmaking tools in general, there is always a time and place for certain tools and you're choosing the right tool for the right job. Do I think it's gonna replace our Segway? No, I do think it, does a lot of things that the Segway doesn't do, which is really great. But again, it's all about using the right tool uh, for the right shoot. And that's something to keep in mind. And I, I think that this really does fill some, some gaps within our filmmaking and what we film sometimes. And it gets me pretty excited for kind of the potential with it. A lot of these shots that we captured, you know, they're not shots that we would have been able to capture necessarily with the Segway from the speed aspect. Um, and then just the stability aspect. Something like a 16 inch wheel is, it makes a huge difference when you're going on different terrain, whether it's hitting a huge crack in the sidewalk or going off a curb. Um, having this bigger wheel makes a massive difference in terms of stability and kind of the, the terrain that you can run on with something like this. Now, the other aspect is again, that suspension, which is a really big part. And that is something that segways don't have. And it's something that one wheels also don't have. All right, so Zach's following me on the Segway. We got some uneven terrain here. And the shot that I did in front of these houses is a really good example of the suspension and why it's important. You can see it's, it's pretty bumpy and there's some big spots even like right here, dips and stuff. Look at him, he's getting shook to his bones. You just wouldn't be able to film on terrain like this where it's really super bumpy. You have a bunch of big dips. So that's where something like this with the suspension comes in super handy because you can actually absorb a lot of that as you're riding. Obviously, there's still some bounciness to it, but it's not shaking you like the Segway would. Something like this is, uh, in my mind, a little bit safer from, again, that aspect of you're, you're on a bigger wheel, you're front facing, because again, when you're on a one wheel, you're facing sideways. So if you hit something or if there's something in your path that might knock you off, your recovery, your ability to basically dismount and jump off the vehicle is a little bit difficult because you're sideways versus on a unicycle, you're standing forward and if you hit something or if you need to jump off, it's really easy is what I've found to, you know, just jump off it. Is it worth getting? I really think it depends on the type of filmmaking that you do and the type of capture and shots on your jobs. This is a pretty expensive one. This is a $3,000 unicycle, so it might not be for everyone. But like I said, there is a pretty wide range when it comes to EUCs uh, that you can get. You can get really entry level ones that have a lot of potential to still capture really amazing looking shots. And then you can kind of work your way up from there. I think a big factor into considering something like this is again, you know, do you want to ride it? Because I think ultimately, if you're not good at it, and if you don't want to spend time riding it and getting better at it, you know, it's probably not going to be a tool that you want to use often if you're not going to have the experience to ride it safely uh, and responsibly. Now, there's probably plenty of you that are watching this thinking I will never film with an electric unicycle and it's not for everyone. You know, certain jobs just it doesn't call for it. But for us, the potential of what this can do and the, the shot potentials that we can capture with this gets me super excited. So with that, that's everything I have. Guys, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. We'd love to chat more about it. With that, we'll see you in the next video.